All right, so for row number four, we have what you guys did the first week of this whole quarantine. Uh, the word is refraction, and if we scroll and look at refraction, it says that it's the change of direction of a wave that occurs because the wave changes speed upon entering a new medium. So here's a light wave, and we're going to pretend that that's white light. And white light, if you split it up, if you bend it right, it can actually produce all of the colors of the rainbow. And we call that Roy G. Biv. So it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, violet, Roy G. Biv. Uh, so refraction can happen if light is bent uh, upon entering a new medium, which this medium in this case is a solid. So it can bend this way into different colors like split up or it could just simply bend and change direction a little bit so there's this example here as well the same thing can happen with sound and i tried to put sound in longitudinal format like because light it's transverse and then sound longitudinal uh when you talk you can actually send your sound your waves to a medium and the medium can change its direction with sound uh so i can bend it now sorry we have a uh, motorcyclist driving by producing a lot of longitudinal waves uh all right moving on let's go to uh reflection but actually before that please know the rainbows that you see outside that's due to refraction up in the atmosphere the water molecules up in the atmosphere bend white light into these colors and i know you had a question saying like oh it's double reflection makes a double rainbow well yeah if you have double reflection it can refract twice it can refract white light in two different areas okay so refraction is what makes the rainbow double reflection is what creates two of them so let's look at reflection. Uh, if you have a mirror, wavelengths will simply bounce off of them. And you learned about angle of incidence. That's basically, uh, so the light wave comes down, it hits the mirror. And if you draw a line perpendicular to the mirror and then measure the angle between the way the light comes in, that's your angle of incidence. And the angle of incidence always equals the angle of reflection on a flat mirror. Uh, so if those things are equal, it makes the image that's produced by the mirror look perfect. Um, then you have items like this wall back here or anything that's not a mirror behind me. You see, white light's hitting those areas right now. So we could pretend that this blue right here, let's pretend it's white light. Okay, I know it's blue, but I just wanted to make it look different. But this light could hit, say, a table, a flat table. The table, instead of reflecting it exactly the way that it should go, it scatters the light, which makes it have a certain color to it, like a, a dimness, like a dullness. So diffuse reflection is what makes things not look like a mirror. All right. Absorption. You see, waves can be absorbed. So, and that's including uh, electromagnetic as well as longitudinal. So you have radiant energy and sound energy. Both of them could hit a new medium. And that new medium converts it into a different type of energy called thermal energy. So it converts it to heat. So that's what absorption does. Uh, those of you who wear like a black t-shirt, uh, you'll notice you'll get warmer during the summertime outside because black absorbs all colors, leaving a void of color. So therefore, it gets warm. It absorbs all of it. If you wear a white shirt, out in the summer this shirt reflects all of the light coming at it but it diffuse reflects it leaving it to be the color white that's why this this shirt isn't like a mirror it's just white uh so it 
ends up instead of absorbing it reflects all of it back out in different directions and it keeps you cool that's why you wear a white t-shirt during the summertime so if you have a blue shirt let's just make this clear if you're wearing a blue shirt outside please know that your your shirt is absorbing all of the colors of the spectrum of all the colors of Roy G. Bibb except for blue. It's reflecting blue back out at your eye. Then you have the word diffraction. If you look at diffraction down here, let's see where that is. It says occurs when a wave bends and spreads around a medium. So here are here's a medium. Like say here's like a doorway. And let's just say a student screams at the top of his or her lungs that he or she can't wait for lunchtime, which right now you guys probably are able to choose when you have lunch, lucky you. Uh, but they yell in this direction, it hits the doorway. When it hits the doorway, it diffracts and it actually bends outward. Okay, and just so you guys all know, uh, when it bends outward, I kind of drew them too far. It'll bend outward, but if you're standing right behind the barrier, sometimes you won't actually hear it. So you got to be standing like here, 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 here. Um, but it will bend the sound. Then you have physical ocean waves. Physical ocean waves, um, they're very transverse, uh, as you can see when they move like this. But what's cool is ocean waves have this weird circular movement to them. The, the particles inside of a wave move like this. Like you notice how like a wave on the ocean, it goes like the tide comes in, it comes out. The wave comes in, it comes out. That's because the water, it's not just going to keep going, right? It's not going to just go up the beach and enter anywhere it wants to go. It actually cycles back in. So the water current kind of moves. I'll try to move my finger in the right direction. Um, the way it wants to, you guys can see here, you got a crest, a trough, here's wavelength once again, uh, from two corresponding parts of a wave. And this node line that we have drawn here is actually sea level. So that's just how an ocean wave goes. It's a mechanical wave, obviously, because guys, it needs a medium to travel and yeah, the waves will move the direction that the wind is blowing them. Right. Hopefully that helps you, you know, learn a few things.